So we're replacing all the antique doors in our house as they've provided very little shelter from the winter weather here in Canada. And we're repurposing these doors in our renovation in which we're adding a couple of closets and a laundry room. Over the years, these doors have been painted several times and have been weathered as they are exterior doors. This has really distorted the overall quality and workmanship of the doors. So in order to really restore them to their former glory and bring out all the craftsmanship that is present in these antique doors, we're removing the paint. To do this, we've started with a cream-like paint remover that is water-based and biodegradable. After applying a coat of the paint remover, you can apply this paper which helps to encapsulate the paint remover while it does its thing. So as you lay out the paper, you also want to smooth it in place to help attach it to the paint and all the little grooves and crevices. One of the great things about using this cream-based paint remover is that you no longer have to do any sanding. And that's fantastic for any doors that you have no idea what sort of paint is on that door. And if you sand, you can get fragments and chips and even little particles of lead paint into the air, into your household, which can be quite hazardous to yours and your family's health. After letting the paint remover set, you're ready to peel away the paper. This is a very satisfying and exciting part of the process. Once you've peeled back that paper, you're ready to start scraping off the paint. We're using a putty knife to do that. And what you can see is all these paint layers, these years and years of paint are just coming off in one piece. It's just this satisfying peeling of the paint. So after you've scraped off the large portions of paint, it's still quite wet, the surface, with paint and paint remover. So getting an old rag to wipe off all that excess liquid will help prepare you for the next step. So sometimes the paint comes off as one large piece and sometimes it still remains in the little crevices so you do need to work a little bit to get those bits out of the cracks and crevices. Once you've scraped and rubbed off all the paint and paint remover, you have to neutralize the chemical process from the paint remover by adding a neutralizer spray onto the surface. This will prepare the surface for the next working step. At this point you might find some raised bits or some paint remaining on the surface. You can definitely reapply the paint remover and do the last few steps all over again. That's certainly a great way to do this or you can try to sand down the bits 
Again, if you're worried about lead paint, using the paint remover process is a much safer way of doing it. As you can see, near the end of the process, there was a lot of paint remnants remaining on the glass. So what you need to do to get rid of this paint is to spray the surface with some more neutralizer and then scrape off the residue or wipe it off and then repeat this until the glass becomes clear. So after using the neutralizer and scraping off all the remaining paint, we still have that residue remaining. So what we did was used a bit of liquid paint thinner to rub on the glass and that was really effective at removing that final bit of residue. So after rubbing on the liquid paint thinner, we did have to spray some neutralizing agent again. Anytime you use any type of paint thinner, you do need to neutralize and stop that chemical process. What we found is with this one final wipe and drying of that stabilizer, the glass became clear just like brand new. So if you're planning to paint the door just like we are, you're all set and ready to go. If you want to stain the door instead, you would need to do some extra work. As you can see, there's still some staining on the surface of the door, which will show up through a wood stain. We hope you enjoyed watching this project, and if you want to see more videos from Crafters Grove, please hit that subscribe button. Bye!